Hi, my name is Jovan and I'm Program Manager in Data Platform Group. I will show you what is Azure SQL Managed Instance, the best platform as a service destination for all SQL workloads. Azure SQL Managed Instance is a flavor of SQL database designed to enable easy migration to fully manage platform as a service for almost any application. It is fully fledged SQL instance with nearly 100% compatibility with on-premise SQL Server database. So it enables easy lift and shift from on-premise to Azure Cloud. It is fully managed. It is built on the same platform as a service infrastructure as Azure SQL database. So it provides automated backup, automatic patching, point in time restore, and all benefits that Azure SQL database provides. It is fully isolated. It has native VNet implementation, and it is placed in your VNet with assigned private IP addresses. It has competitive and transparent business model. It enables frictionless migration to Azure Cloud. It brings you the latest and greatest features that are coming in Azure SQL database, such as new T-SQL features, performance and security enhancements that we are shipping in Azure Cloud. Azure SQL Managed Instance is SQL Server instance hosted and managed by Azure Cloud. You can connect two instances using Link Server, Service Broker, SQL Agent, or any other component that you have in SQL Server on-premise. We are enabling a lot of features that you have in your on-premise installation of SQL Server, such as CLR, SQL Agent, cross-database queries, link servers, service broker, native restore. Any features that you are already using in your on-premise SQL Server will probably work in Azure SQL Managed Instance. One thing that is more important than features is isolation. SQL instances are fully isolated. Their compute and storage is placed in virtual cluster that is fully isolated from all other tenants in Azure SQL. SQL instances are placed in your VNet and placed in your subnet. You can control access to your SQL instances using subnets and NSGs, and you can assign private IP addresses to subnet where SQL instance is placed. You can use SQL instances as extension of your on-premise data center. You can connect your on-premise resources using VPN net tunneling or express route gateway to Azure SQL managed instances and use them as any other resources in your network. If you have any backend subnets or front -end subnets in your on-premise network, you can establish VNet to subnet connection between these networks, and you can use SQL instances from your web apps or link SQL instances to your on-premise database. SQL instances are just yet another resource in your network. I will show you a demo where you can see how to migrate your databases on SQL on VM or SQL on on-premise SQL Server to Azure SQL Managed Instance. In this demo, I have one SQL Server on VM in Azure that has two databases. I have one SQL Managed Instance where I already placed one of these two databases, and now I want to migrate second database to the instance. I also have a web app that is currently pointing to SQL on VM, and my goal is to migrate this app and point it to SQL instance. First, I will take database from SQL on VM and create a backup to Azure Blob Storage. Then, I will restore database on SQL instance from the backup on Azure Storage. Finally, I will point my app from SQL on VM to SQL Managed Instance. Here I can see two instances. One is my Azure SQL Managed Instance, 
that has one AdventureWorks database. I'm also connected to local SQL on VM instance that has several databases, AdventureWorks, AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. I have already moved AdventureWorks database to measured instance, and now I need to move AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database. We are supporting backup to Azure Blob Storage URL. So first, I need to connect to my SQL Server on VM, create credential that points to URL to my Azure Blob Storage with shared access signature placed here. And then I have created a backup of database AdventureWorks Data Warehouse here to this URL. This backup is already finished. So now I have a backup of my database on Azure Blob Storage. In Azure SQL Managed Instance, we are supporting restore from Azure Blob Storage URL. So now I need to connect to my Azure SQL Managed Instance, create credential to my Blob Storage, and run restore database AdventureWorks Data Warehouse from URL where I have placed my backup. I will run this statement, and now I'm starting to restore my AdventureWorks Data Warehouse backup. My backup is now completed, so when I refresh my databases, I can see that my AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database is restored, and I can see all tables in this database. Now, my database migration from SQL Server on VM to Mesh instance is completed. Here we can see one ASP.NET web application that uses AdventureWorks database. It is connected to IP address shown below, and this is IP address of my SQL on VM, and it is connected to AdventureWorks database. In this application, we can find customers from AdventureWorks database or sales orders from AdventureWorks database. This application uses AdventureWorks database that I have migrated from SQL on VM to managed instance. I will go to my application settings of my uh, application, and I will go in settings, application settings, blade, and scroll down to connection strings. Currently, I'm using this connection string that is pointing to my SQL on VM instance, but I will change this, and I will use AdventureWorks connection string on my managed instance that is pointing to this demo shared GP managed instance. I will just save connection strings, and I will go back to my application. When I refresh any page, like sales orders or customer page, application will restart, and it will use managed instance as data source instead of MySQL on VM. As you can see, application is refreshed, and now in the bottom corner, you can see that it uses demo shared GP instance, and this is the name of my managed instance. I can go to any page, like customer, reports, sales, and you will see that my application just works. I can even open standard SQL profiler that is pointing to my demo shared GP instance, and this is managed instance that I'm using, and I can see all queries that my front-end application sends to my managed instance. Now we will see what is so specific in this web application. This is a standard web application that is using two databases on my Azure SQL managed instance. It uses both AdventureWorks and AdventureWorks Data Warehouse database. This web application is connected to AdventureWorks database, and then it is using cross-database queries to take some data from the database that is on the same instance. 
In this demo, we will see how to create cross database queries using synonyms. Then I will show you how to create cross instance queries that are going from my database, AdventureWorks on Managed Instance, to some database on my SQL on VM. Then I will show you how to use bulk import from Blob Storage that will load data from Blob Storage account into one table in my AdventureWorks database. I will use service broker query notifications to send information that some row is changed in my table to web application. So instead of constant polling, database will send event to web application. And then web application will use signal R notification that will notify web clients that they need to refresh some report. Finally, instead of manual loading data from uh, blob storage, I will run SQL agent that will execute bulk insert script and load data from blob storage to my table. And then it will send me notification email to my Outlook client. My application is connected to this managed instance where I have two databases, AdventureWorks and the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. The AdventureWorks database, I have this procedure, get sales report, that is using two synonyms, data warehouse dim product and database fact internet sales to get information from some other database. Currently, if I run this query, it will fail because I don't have this synonym. Now, I will create two synonyms, data warehouse dim product and data warehouse fact internet sales that will point to objects in another database. In this example, synonym dim product will go to AdventureWorks Data Warehouse DBO dim product uh, table. So it will just point to a table in Data Warehouse database. This is used for cross database joins. I will create this synonym and when I execute this query, I'm actually having cross database query because I'm executing query in AdventureWorks database and using synonym, I'm going to AdventureWorks data warehouse database. Now, when I go back to my sales order uh, report procedure, I can run this query and it will work. All synonyms are configured and I have cross database query that is running across the database. Now, instead of synonyms that are pointing to objects in different database, I can create synonyms that are pointing to objects in another instance. Here, I can create a link server that is pointing to this IP address. And this IP address is IP address of my SQL on VM. So if I create this link server, it will be shown on my managed instance. And now I can run cross instance queries. This query is sending request to the SQL instance on SQL on VM on this IP address, AdventureWorks database, sales schema, sales order header table. If I execute this query from my managed instance, I am executing cross instance query using link servers. Now I can drop my synonyms that are pointing to cross database objects and create another two synonyms that are pointing to cross instance objects. In this case, dim product will point to dim product table in DBO schema in AdventureWorks data warehouse on remote instance. So now if I execute again my query, it will return data not from my database on the same instance, but for from database on remote instance using link servers. In this web application, I have set of reports like number of orders per ship method, average sales per product. This report number of orders per ship method is reading data from orders table. In Azure SQL Managed Instance, we have enabled bulk insert command 
that can load the data from Azure Blob Storage and place it into order table. What you need to do is just to create some external data, external data source, standard Blob Storage, define that it is, this type is Blob Storage and specify what is URL of this Blob Storage. Then you can use standard bulk insert command to import data from Azure Blob Storage file into your orders table. But what is more important is that in this application, I have configured service broker to notify web application whenever I change some data in orders table. So first, if I truncate table orders, my report will be clean. Now, when I insert data from Azure Blob Storage to table orders, data will be loaded and my web page will be refreshed. If I execute it again, I will have more data. In this example, I have used service broker query notification to send notification from Azure SQL Managed Instance to web application. And then I have used Signal R to notify web application that something changed in database and I'm refreshing report whenever something changes in database. This is the way how you can create real-time reports that are refreshed whenever something changed in your managed instance. In this example, I'm using manual bulk insert command. But instead of manual query, I can create SQL agent job that can have several steps. And one step can be bulk insert into orders from my Azure Blob Storage. And second step can be rebuilding all indexes on table order. Now, if I clean up this table, I can run this job. And this job will load data into my table. So whenever I load the data, this report will be refreshed and I will have the latest data on this report. SQL Server Agent can send email notifications whenever job finishes. In this job, I have specified that I need to have notification sent on my email address whenever job completes. Since I have completed my job, I can go to my email and I can see that I have new messages that are notifying me that my manager instance is finished the job and everything is working fine. 